Shadaf Abid has been working for 12 years in microfinance in Pakistan, and she's now moving on to a new area of social entrepreneurship. Sadaf, can you tell us what are some of the lessons that you've learned in microfinance that you'll be taking with you to your new position? I was very fortunate to spend about 13 years of my life working in microfinance and I joined Kash, which, is a, which was a startup institution, uh, a specialized microfinance institution in Pakistan in early 1997. Uh, the institution had just started, uh, we were in two small rooms and I worked uh, closely with the founder then in sort of building the organization, developing systems, products, understanding the client. These were days when we didn't really know much about microfinance. We were all learning and we were really working like a lab. And we would go out in the villages and you know, talk to women and talk about providing access to credit. And it was very interesting because uh, you know, we would have thought that you know, there'll be tons of people coming to us that we want to set up something. But uh, one realized that uh, women particularly have a lot of fears and apprehensions and uh, you know given the culture and the context of Pakistan they were not used to uh, really making such decisions and uh, in some ways uh, running enterprises they were used to doing small uh, initiatives in in the house so a lot of our time initially really went in confidence building and in in sort of telling women that you can do this you know you 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 have the abilities you you can do it you know our role was really to tap into their resources and skills so not necessarily give them ideas on what business to do but to really uh, give them examples of other women in their area and what they were doing so that they can get also inspired and to facilitate exchange of ideas and uh, that's how we sort of encouraged women and uh, going back to some of the lessons that one learned from this experience, I think one was really that, you know, based on the culture and context of the environment, you really need to adapt your model. So we couldn't just pick it up from Bangladesh and just start running it in Pakistan. We had to uh, tune it to the local uh, context. Uh, secondly, I think uh, we learned that it's important to bring a focus on building systems and attracting talent. Because ultimately, once you've got the business model right, what is important is to scale it. And for that, you need the right people who not only bring the expertise, but also the passion uh, for this kind of work. And that can be a challenge, you know, finding uh, human resources who combine uh, these two elements. I think another lesson that I've learned is really that uh, you need to make scale a friend. And for that, uh, it's important to see you know, uh, what are the systems that you need to invest in, uh, documenting all the procedures. Uh, at the same time, you know, you want to maintain the creativity element also. You don't want to let go of that. So that's a fine tension, you know, creativity versus systemization. Uh, that is also needed. And with time, the institution needs to keep questioning its business model. You know, is it really working? Um, how can I improve this? Because your, as the institution is growing, your clients are also growing and their needs are changing and evolving. So the model has to be flexible enough to meet those uh, needs. And uh, I think another important thing is governance. Uh, I felt that that is also a very important area when we look at social enterprises. You know, who's on your board? What kind of skill sets do they represent? What experience are they bringing? And you create an, an environment where your board can really ask you questions and uh, critique you so that together you can make something more meaningful. And there's still a lot of room, I think, uh, in the uh, social enterprise space for really making boards more active and helping them understand their roles and responsibilities. You know, how you select your board is very important and how the board gets re-elected and how long is their term, you know, all of those things. So I think that's where maybe we can learn from uh, practices in the business world. As a finance institution, in order to attract capital, obviously you need to be operating profitably. Was that the case? Ours was a, basically an NGO yeah. and we were functioning profitably. We were in fact the first ones in the country to become financially sustainable. Uh, it took us seven years at that time and uh, the challenge really was getting access to capital, which was one of the main challenges when we were growing actually, uh, to access funds so we could grow. Uh, so I think that continues to be a challenge for social enterprises. You know, Where did you get the capital from? So we had various donors. We, had, uh, we were very fortunate. We had DFID, which is the British government. They came in. We had the Aachen Foundation. We had the Swiss. 
so we had a lot of grants coming in from these institutions which helped us again building the institution, investing in systems and research in, in talent and eventually once we were financially sustainable we were also able to get funds from uh, commercial banks. And one of the entities that really helped us was uh, a, a wholesale fund that had been set up by World Bank to, f to basically on lend to microfinance institutions, the PPF in Pakistan. So they would lend money to us and we could then lend it out. So we've talked about scalability, we've talked about governance, we've talked about access to finance. What are some of the other issues that social entrepreneurs need to take into account in their strategic planning? I think there's still room for uh, greater creativity and experimentation. I think uh, perhaps uh, uh, that is an area that we constantly need to remind ourselves of that, uh, you know, how can we be more creative, inventive, make new discoveries? And it really starts with uh, having a curious mind and, uh, you know, having that mind of a startup and uh, not becoming too attached to what you do. And what I mean is really that uh, not being attached in terms of experimenting and changing the parameters. Because with time, it's important to adapt. And I think, uh, so, so my uh, sense is that there's room for greater creativity. And there's also room to, that as you evolve your business model, to keep questioning it and refining it. Uh, that's a very important element. And the other thing I would say is really, we still have to work hard on attracting talent. So how can we work with the business schools in the world? You know, what are some of the synergies and collaboration that can be done to attract more talent in this field? Uh, that's, I think, one exciting arena. And then also collaboration with business or with other uh, enterprises. Uh, I believe there's a real opportunity to understand the different uh, stakeholders that are operating in this ecosystem. You know, what are the different perspectives? How is the social entrepreneurship viewed by people in the business world? What can we learn from them? What, what do they have to offer to us? What can we offer to them? So it's like getting all the stakeholders in one room and really talking it out. And I think that could also lead to some great creativity and perhaps efficiency. How about the relationship with governments and the public policy environment? What has been your experience in that area? I think that's also, I think, a, a, a path where progress is happening, but much needs to be done because I think it's uh, governments, are, policy makers are now beginning to sort of understand this space or question it, uh, but it's, it's still a, a discovery process. And I think a lot of education again needs to be done. Uh, too much regulation is also not good because you want the creativity, you want experimentation. Uh, at the same time, you do want, uh, once the sector matures, gets to a certain stage, you want some sort of supervisory uh, role at some stage. But at this stage, I think we really need a lot more experimentation. We perhaps need access to funds uh, that can be used uh, for social enterprises. Uh, and we need government to have a more uh, positive uh, support environment. Sadaf Abid, thank you very much for being with us at INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you. Thank you.